Welcome to The Passion Pod with your host, Chris Johnson. Thanks for joining us. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the feature presentation. Welcome back, friends. Here we are at Reverb 2024 with a DJ who just got off the stage with Bubba Sparks. Boom! Dude. Oh, man, the energy's crazy out there. In your own words, who are you and what are you passionate about? The world calls me Strizzo, uh, Tampa Bay. Uh, people probably know me from Tampa area as the the mixer on 94.1 FM, 95.7 FM. Uh, and I produced the record Bust a Wide Open featuring Juicy J. Sick. So uh, that was Billboard Top 50 in 2012. Uh, and uh, but I'm formerly a DJ. Yeah, and you've been in music then a very long time. When did you get started yeah. in music? Oh man. Uh, so I was an athlete growing up. And football, my, basketball, what? Football. Okay. Yeah, football and track. Cool. Uh, so my uh, coach, Coach Bean, on Sundays he would take us to the flea market, and for some reason I fell in love with like turntables. Because okay. he would buy turntables that were, like, broken yeah. and refurbish them. Sure. And then uh, I would just go and be like, what go, what go? And, you <laughs> know what I mean? So I started DJing very young. Um, and that's when it started in the 90s, yeah. late 90s. Were you just doing that at, like, friends' parties and stuff to begin with? Yeah. So it started, you know, uh, oh, I'm having a birthday at the rec center or whatever. So I would just go and, you know, do the rec center parties, backyard parties. Sure. Living room parties. And, um, you know, then after college, I got hired in radio. And then I started, like, doing it at, like, the big gymnasiums and stuff. Yeah, okay. And uh, once I started doing it at the big gyms, uh, I got hired by the radio station. And I just kind of took off from there. Did That's you, how me and Bubba met. Did you pursue radio specifically, or did you kind of almost get recruited by them? I got recruited, yeah. Oh, okay. So I didn't... Somebody saw you at a party, it was handed crazy. you a so, card. So, you know, uh, I was a, a all-star athlete. Okay. Um, what position did you say you played? I was a wide receiver and a oh. DB. Uh, but I made it to the 96, not to tell my age, <laughs> I made it to the 96 Olympic trials Whoa. as a hurdler. Wow. Yeah. And I was really good in track and field. The uh, 110 hurdles and the 200. I still hold the record at Clearwater High School. Uh, for the 110 hurdles. How come you didn't stick in that lane? Did you have an injury or something? Oh, man, my mom asked me the same thing, bro. It's crazy because that was a conversation. Yeah. Right? So I started DJing, and uh, I got all these letters from all these colleges, and I had committed. And I think this is the cardinal sin, so kids don't do what I did. Uh, I committed to the University of uh, Illinois, Southern Illinois. I was going to be a Saluki. Okay. And uh, I got cold feet. I went up for a college visit, and it was cold. You know, I'm a Florida boy. So it was super cold. And I remember the coach saying, well, when you first come, you know, as a freshman, you got to do, like, the two-a-days. And I was like, all right. So I remember going to my mom and saying, uh, Mama, can I just stay home and pursue music? And uh, it she really wanted me to go to college, obviously. Right. But I think it was more so of like, uh, she was. I remember like it was yesterday. She's like, "You better go be successful," and that's what I went and did, man. So how did you get recruited? And how quickly after you decided not to go to college were you making like a full time living from music? So uh, I went to college in '96. So I went to the Olympic trials in 96. I made it to the semifinals as a hurdler. And we were running fast, bro. I, I mean, we sure. were. <laughs> you know how fast you're going in the, in the Olympics. Yeah. Uh, so I made it to the semifinals. I placed uh, fifth. So I didn't make it to the final, but I made it to the semifinals. Yeah. Uh, you got to be in the top four to get to the final. Uh, so I was in the semifinal. I placed fifth by a chin. And... Uh, after that, so I, it wasn't like I lost my passion for it, but it was like I love music more, right? if that makes sense. And uh, so I go, I, I sign up for the local college, uh, St. Pete College yeah. in Tampa Bay. And uh, I go there, 
I do two semesters, and then that summer semester, the local radio station called me to hire me. Wow. Cool. Yeah. How long did you work in radio? Do you still work in radio? I worked in radio for 11 years, man. Oh, okay. I worked in radio 11 years. They try to get me to come back. I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, they try yeah. to get me to come back. Uh, that's how me and Bubba met. Yeah, so uh, tell me that story. Oh, man, Bubba. Bubba changed my life, bro. Man, it's crazy. Uh, it was, and I get emotional, but, uh, you know, in Tampa Bay as a producer, DJ, like, you only can get so hot, you yeah. know? And uh, it was... I was working at one station, but the other station wanted to play my music. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And so Bubba called me on a Tuesday, bro. I'll never forget it. I was sitting in front of a fire pit at uh, this spot in Tampa, and he called. He actually called my boy Blaze um, because he's a Georgia boy. You know, all the Georgia boys hang, and he called Blaze, and uh, I just simply said, tell Bubba I said, what's up? And, you know, me and Bubba got cool when he was in Tampa. I met him when I was um, working in 95.7 The Beat in Tampa. And me and, him, me and Bubba got super cool. And, and we did music together, you know, produced some stuff. And he was like, uh, bro, call me. So I called him and he was like, bro, what are you doing? And so he's like, Bust a Wide Open is blowing up all over the country. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I got Juicy J on the, on the remix and everything. But the only thing about living in Tampa Bay, outside of Tom Brady uh, and, and uh, football, is that once you get to a certain level, the powers that be won't let you graduate. Yeah, they won't, bro. It's crazy, man. It's like, bro, I'm top 50 billboard. Yeah. The San Antonio Spurs licensed it for the playoffs. Sure. And everything. Um, but Bubba was like, look, man. This song blowing up, man, and um, I'm I'm getting back out here, and I want to use that as the introduction to Miss New Booty. And he was like, but the tour starts next Friday, and I need you to let me know something in 24 hours. Oh. And so uh, I'll never forget it, bro. I was sitting in front of a fire pit, and uh, I left. I, I rode across the bridge, and by the time I got over the other side of the bridge, I was like... I'm a, this is what I'm going to do. And I went out with Bubba as his tour DJ. And we were only supposed to do it for the spring of 2014. And it went so good. The reaction was so good. And, you know, the way we feed off of each other. Uh, and it ended up being like a permanent thing for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Have you guys been, because that's 10 years ago, has it been pretty steady that entire time you guys have been working together? Or So, for from 2014 to 2018 early 19 we were at it sure and then uh you know life happens bro right and so he had to uh take a step back and reevaluate some things and so when he did that i was getting all these offers um because as a dj it's very hard you know you get like a lot of these djs that do um computer stuff yeah i'm yeah. a dj that knows how to use the turntables you know sure. what I mean? and so uh artists usually want to get us because we know how to make it look and yeah visually with the performance right and everything. yeah uh you're really djing you're really doing the art yeah so he needed to take a he needed to take some time off and people were asking me left and right so i ended up like right when me and him uh took some time off i got brought onto another tour and then next thing you know, it's like two or three years. You know, time flies, man. You know, and uh, but then after that, it was one of those things where like, hey, man, uh, let's go. Let's keep the band together and keep rocking. And so anytime he hits me up and my calendar is free, I go. Approximately how many days out of the year are you on the road, you think? Oh, man. If you had to <laughs> guess. Oh, man. Oh, uh, about 150 plus oh wow still after all these years how yeah. come you don't want to just st like settle down and stay at home if you got a lot of producing work in you probably yeah could. so actually i did so right now this year i'm on pace to do about 110 okay. right um Which is a like, down year somehow <laughs> yeah so you know next week i gotta fly out to iowa i got something to do out there and then when i leave there i gotta go to portland 
I'll be in Portland for two days, and then yeah. when I leave there, I got to go to Ohio, and I'll be out there for a couple of days. Um, but also understand, you know, when you're a a go to DJ, everybody wants you to yeah do your thing because they know that okay, when he comes, it's going to be a party. It's going to be the yeah. energy is going to be right. Uh, I'm one of the biggest open format DJs in the world. Yeah. I have an official Guns N' Roses remix, Sick. an official um, uh, Poison remix. You know, I got damn, I got an official Avant remix. How do you get those? So you just do the remix and you let the people hear it. And you let their people hear it. Let their management hear. Yes. It. Have you had conversations with the actual members of Guns N' Roses and whatnot since that? Like once the I remix have is not, out. But one time with Def Leppard because I have a Def Leppard remix out. Sure. Um, I put out that this is coming out, and I had one of their T-shirts on, yeah. and they literally were like, "Great T-shirt, great song." I was like, "Oh my god." Isn't that crazy? Like, obviously, like, they're mega famous, but, like, the people you hang around in the rap industry, obviously, are also mega famous. Yeah. But when you're talking to somebody that's not part of your genre, right? it's almost like they're more famous than they are otherwise, right. just because it's not, they're not your regular peers that you're around. Yeah, you're like, it's Def Leppard, bro. Right, yeah. Uh, and, it, you know, I've always liked all kinds of music. You know, my sure. mom, uh, she would introduce me to all kinds of music, bro. I was born on Earth, Wind, and Fire. Sure. You know, uh, Journey, um, uh, Michael McDonald, yeah. you know what I mean? Kenny Loggins, you know. And so when I hear these records now, if you if, if you hear it at a, like an old school party or something, it resonates and people are still party yeah. to it. And people are tired of like doing all the crazy stuff. People want to have fun again, bro. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I think uh, the a lot of the younger like beat makers and stuff, are at least the type of music that's coming out has yeah. really lost that in my yeah. opinion versus yes. like i think of like old kanye west as an example is like one of the first times that i heard that where it was like this isn't just beats and hip-hop it feels like something else some yes. other genres are just like pulling into this and i really love how that's gone yeah or how well how it used to go hey, yeah 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 so kanye he used to like remember like the stuff he did with twista mm -hmm. it's like where'd that go Dude. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not to get too deep into that, yeah, but yeah. yeah, yeah. For sure. It was like as a producer, could, because he, he would use the same drum machine I use, okay. which is the MPC 2000, yeah. which is the analog machine that you put into MIDI, which goes into digital. Sure. But the stuff that you could do on the MPC, he would do, and I, I could relate because I'm like, bro, I produce some of the biggest records, underground records yeah. and remixes that I produce is on that same machine so to see him doing that i'm like yo and then like now you just don't hear those um combinations anymore what are two of your favorite songs that you use that machine one that did almost surprisingly well and one that should have done better so i got a record underground record anybody that uh looked this up it's called bootleg uh and i remember i made it after a club night one it was on a saturday night never forget it uh rick ross uh, was at the club that I was at and he was singing the record that he uh, the artist that actually sings the hook like nobody knows that guy I got a couple of dollars I'm gonna spend them on her bam, bam. you know that yeah, song yeah. who's the guy that sings the hook I have no idea nobody knows <laughs> Ex exactly but he performed at the club and uh, while he was performing my homeboy this is when CDs were still relevant my homeboy was over in the corner Burning Plies his new album yeah. in the corner, like <laughs> selling it out the DJ booth. And I just remember, you know, uh, we would call that burning. You know, you burn yeah. a CD. Yeah. And I remember just saying, uh, can I curse on here? <laughs> yeah, I'll bleep oh, it out, but you can't. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll bleep it out. Oh, it's it burn my, burn, burn my, sh burn my, sh you know. Yeah. And I was standing on the microphone after he got off stage. And I remember thinking, like, this that could be something, bro. So I went home that night after the club closed. About 4.35 in the morning, I made a, made a song. And, and right now in Miami, it's still like a top 20 song. And, it, it, and I recorded the whole song in the drum machine. It, it's, is it something that they play heavy in clubs and stuff? Because I yeah. feel like the music that... Yeah. Because that, that's totally different, though, right? Yeah. Like, when somebody makes a song, some of them work specifically for that, and other right. ones are more so, like, radio-type situation. 
Right. So in Florida, we're big on like the underground record that will blow up. Yeah. Right. Well, and the club scene's huge there, right? Yo, super huge. Yeah. If you don't have a club record in Florida, you're not really blowing up. Sure. Right. You that you have to tap into either the uh, the downtown club areas or the strip club areas yeah. or the college. Either one. Either one of those three. If you sure. don't tap into any one of those. No light of day. So I know there's a lot of DJs that, because they want to stay home, mm -hmm. start just like having more residencies at clubs and whatnot. And you yeah. can definitely make a living doing that. How come have you? How come you haven't chosen to do that, or have you done that in the past? Yeah. So before Bubba asked me to go on the road, mm -hmm. I mean, so in Tampa they think I'm a, they consider me a legend. Sure. Like I'm on the Mount, like I'm on the Mount Rushmore of Tampa Bay. Hell yeah. So yeah, I did all the clubs, and I got to the point where it was just old to me. Right. You know, like I DJed at all the big clubs. When I worked at radio, our biggest broadcast night was Saturday night at the Underground in downtown Tampa. Uh, we would do 2,000 people every Saturday night Wow! in downtown Tampa. Um, and it was just one of those things where it's like, okay, I'm tired of being the big local guy. Sure. You know, and I, I want to be the big, you know, international DJ and spread the music. And my guns, like, you know, and then when I, I did that, my Guns N' Roses remix, like, took off. Yeah. Like, it's like, it went viral on TikTok a few times. Have you ever done much for touring as just a DJ yourself performing festivals and things like that, rather than yeah. with artists? Yeah, so I do that without artists as well. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. So I think, I mean, even traveling with performers, you go all over the world and you get desensitized to things to a yeah. certain degree. What at this point, what was the last time that you were really excited about something that was happening or a, a moment that you had? Mm, man. That's a really good question. Well, thank you. Huh. That's a really good question. Stumped you. Oh, <laughs> well, uh, you know, kid. so Kid from Kid and Play, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, at these festivals, they pick us up in go karts. <laughs> you know, they yeah yeah you see go karts yeah. So uh, we're in Dallas, and this is recent because um, I'm more of a legacy. Like I get excited about legacy artists, like right. You know, uh, so I'm rocking. I do the intro, I hype it up, then I bring Bubba on. He comes on, and rocks out. We get off stage, I'm walking off, and the go kart comes to pick us up to take us, you know, back to the to the uh, green room RVs or whatever. And Kid from Kid and Play comes up to me. He's like, you did a, he was like, bro, you were rocking. And you know how, like, you're kind of, like, wiping your forehead and you're not, yeah. like, looking at who's – and I'm like, thank you. I dapped him up. And I, then when I wiped my face and looked at him, I'm like, bro, you're, you're Kid from Kid and Play. That's my <laughs> childhood. Yeah. And uh, so I think that is – the moment that I was like, okay, cool. Like what I'm doing actually is dope. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, there's that imposter syndrome, you know, that goes on forever. No, regardless of how big you are, you right. know what I mean? But it's when people that you have a ton of respect for right. show you that they respect what you do. It yeah. means a lot. And like, he said it to me. Yeah. And sure. you know, and, and I didn't ask for it. I was just basically about to get on the go-kart. Yeah. And he was like, bro, you were up there rocking, bro. I'm like, thank you. And then I realized who I'm like, bro, can we take a picture? You yeah. know what I mean? But yeah, that's really like, because I mean, working in radio, you meet so many people. Bro, I drove Chris Brown to Tyrone Square Mall when he was 16 years old. Sure. You know? Yeah. I mean, you get desensitized to it. But again, like yes. certain people you build up in your mind and you're a personal fan of. Because I get to interview a lot of people. I've interviewed hundreds. Yeah. Sure, not nearly as many as you did back at that point. But I've interviewed a ton of people. Yeah. Um, and I'm not necessarily a huge personal fan of all of them. Yeah. I end up liking all of them and they're always rad, but mm -hmm. there are certain people that I've met that like I geek out on. Like I interviewed, uh, my favorite painter cause I paint murals yeah, and it's nice. this French painter. His name's Luca Buffo uh -huh. and lives in France and he was on a U.S. tour and I met him and interviewed him. And if you ever want to see me fan out, fan out, I did in that one. Yeah. Cause I'm like, dude, you, you inspired me to paint. You literally changed my life. And it's not like he's the most famous person I've interviewed, yeah. but like he had such a big impact on me that it was yeah. really meaningful. It's crazy. Like, see, people don't understand that, bro. Like when we do this stuff, bro, it's only certain things that make us tick, you know, because yes, you you get desensitized because you're around it so much. It, it, you know, it's like, oh, that's such and such, you know, but somebody at home is like, oh my God, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
And uh, so I know exactly where you're coming from, bro. I've been around what you would call mega artists. And yeah. then it's, uh, you're like, all right, I'm working. I'm at the radio station, so I'm working. Sure. Yeah. If you could pick anybody to produce a song for that's out right now, who would it be? That you haven't worked with yet. Um, hmm. Rihanna. <laughs> That would be so sick, dude. Oh, yeah, that'd be dope. Could you imagine if you helped her play her uh, Super Bowl show? Oh man, <laughs> how iconic that would have been! Like her, 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 uh, her whole stock grew what, like a hundred and ten percent? Yeah, overnight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was definitely something ridiculous, but it also yeah. was like the most viewed Super Bowl. I yeah. think specifically because of her. Yeah, yeah. She's about like as big as it gets. So. I think we're always still learning things. Mm. Like earlier today, I was struggling because I couldn't figure out how to use this other interface that I have, this mm. like roadcaster. Mm. So that's what I'm trying to learn. What's the last thing that you learned? Uh, I learned uh, how to... That, bro, you asked us some really good questions. <laughs> so I still don't know how to use Pro Tools. Mm. So I still... I have a a uh, engineer now yeah so my engineer he's a good he's a really good engineer uh i still have to use him but i'm learning yeah slowly you know I'm, I'm learning like i know and the thing is man is i'm so old school bro it's like that part of me that does want to learn all the digital stuff i like you know i have a nice social media following you know you go to all these places but it's one little part about me that's like Man, I don't want to go completely digital, if yeah, that makes sense. Sure. So I still have my engineer, and I'm learning. I mean, if I had to get on there and record, and I could, but Pro Tools is something like that I'm starting to learn, but I didn't really want to. Sure. Yeah. What What is the biggest mistake you think young DJs are making right now? Like that they're trying to do, they're pushing for, and it's like they're just looking at the wrong thing. So they don't learn. They 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 don't learn to DJ on everything. Right. Okay. So you could take me and put me in any situation. Sure. Right. I've Such DJ'd. as turntables versus, or what do you mean? Put me on turntables. Yeah. Put me on CDJs. Yeah. Put me in a situation which just happened in North Dakota uh, the other week where there's no mixer and you can't even hook in your Serato box or anything. Yeah. Like I'm talking about the box is the last level that you would go to as a DJ. Sure. And when you're using a denim, the first denim that, you know, that old 20 inch <laughs> denim that goes into the wood and you sure. screw it in, yeah. I walk into the club and it's, there's that. Okay. And I'm like, whoa. So I literally had to do uh, DJs, if you're listening, you can go W and S. And long as your cue points are on, you could literally do a whole party and rock hitting those two letters. I mean, I think that's when you learn is if you put yourself in an uncomfortable position. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And But I've been around DJs that like, if I say something goes wrong, they fold. Yeah. I don't I don't fold under any. And, and you know, but as an old school DJ, we used to DJ in hole in the walls, bro. Right. Uh, and we had to learn how to DJ on everything, bro. I, I learned how to mix on cassette tapes. Sure. So I could mix. So this here, what we're doing right now, bro, yeah. is easy. Yeah. Like plug and play. Sure, but I think just the more experience you have working with any type of equipment, all of that just helps you overall. Absolutely. Learn how to DJs, learn how to mix on everything. Serato, uh, virtual DJ. I don't even know what the, uh, the other ones are. Sure. But learn how to mix on not of those, but just directly through the auxiliary. Yeah. What currently uh, helps you creatively come up with new ideas? Because you must have tried almost everything under the sun at this point. Yeah. What helps you think of new things that are fresh? So I'm, I'm really into energy now. Okay. Like I'm an energy guy. So um, my thing is to get the crowd, you know, hype. So it's really uh, just uh, coming up with sounds that like kind of like you know, you know when the crowd hears that sound, they're gonna be like, oh my god. Yeah. You know, so that's really what I'm into uh, finding the sounds and everything that that resonate. Is that something that you just kind of test out as you're on the road, like little by little at yeah. different shows? It's because it's not like something you can do at home and like. Yeah, you know what's you know? crazy? I had an intro that I was gonna try today, yeah. but 
the schedule got pushed up 15 minutes. And so when we got here, it was like, go on stage. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. so I, I saw it there, but I said, okay, I want to just go with like what I know will work for this crowd. And then I just rolled it back. Sure. Yeah. If you were in my position and you could be a podcast and you could interview anyone in the world, who would you choose to have your first guest have an hour long interview and why? Oh man, you bro, you asked some really good questions. <laughs> Thank you. God, Lee, who? You know what? I would want to. Lil John is an idol to me. Lil John is an OG, <laughs> bro. He is a super cool dude. He's become one of the obviously he's one of the biggest producers in the world, yeah. but now he's become one of the biggest DJs in the world. Like you go to Vegas, bro. They, they he's like a god in Vegas. I didn't even know that about him. Really? Well, I've not, I haven't really followed his career, bro. I'm blowing it apparently. <laughs> bro, bro, he goes to Vegas, yeah, and kills it, bro. When you land on the airplane and you get off and you look at the hotel, the side of the building, yeah, he's a picture on the whole side of like you know how big, how tall is that? Huge. That's like <laughs> fifty floors. Yeah. Yeah. So look, you have Lil John, like come to Hakkasan tonight. Yeah. Oh, he's a huge DJ in Vegas right now. He's a huge DJ. So now when he goes out and, and does stuff, he mostly does his DJ sets. Sure. Who? What's an artist that you discovered recently that you were pleasantly surprised by? Somebody that you hadn't, wasn't already big time that you've already heard a million times. Somebody that you were just introduced to. Um, so I actually started working with her. Her name's Savannah Dexter. Uh, and when you guys get a minute, look up Savannah Dexter. She's about to be the next one in the next couple of years, bro. What kind of music she made? She does, bro. So she can rap. Like she will rap on you real quick. Yeah. Then she'll sing some country on you real quick. And then she'll like do some R&B on you real quick. Wow. Well, I think there's a lot of people like genre bending like that though. Absolutely. But so I did a tour with her. Yeah. Uh, just I mean, not like recently, but like a little while, a uh, couple months back. Yeah. Sold out. Wow. Like a lot of the dates were sold out, bro. And she's she's about to be that one. Savannah Dexter. Is I feel like there's a lot of people that don't take the performing side seriously enough we at have this to. point. Is she the best performer that you've seen recently? So the thing about her is, is she doesn't mind taking in good uh counsel right okay. and you know me being doing this it's about production right right so she invested in her production on the stage and it ended up being like uh again sold out pretty much sure. every night i think you have to invest in yourself you have to a lot of people don't put that time and energy into or the money but if you believe in yourself you have to go all in like my favorite rapper is named son real mm -hmm. and he has a, a song off his last album called uh double down mm -hmm. and like that's the hook is he doubles down on himself mm -hmm. because like on, on nobody else he doubles down on himself to succeed right well dude Thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, man. Thank you for having me, bro. This I, was really cool. I, I didn't know how much time we had because I know you were trying yeah, to get out no, of something. Yeah, no, I didn't. I mean, we're here, bro. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, you know, we got to we gotta go by like an hour yeah. uh, back. But um, I know I heard your interview early with Bubba. You know, Bubba's one of my brothers, bro. And I heard like a lot of the stuff that, you, you, you know, you guys were talking about. I was like, hmm. You know, for Bubba to, to to be able to express stuff from his musical career, it has to be like either a good vibe or good questions being asked. So, and I was over there, you know, listening like, okay, so it's dope, bro. And uh, for you to ask me, I appreciate it. You know, uh, I'm a DJ, man. Us us DJs, man, we we get kind of like, oh, this is DJ. Yeah. You know. Yeah, you get shoved to the back. Right. Yeah. yeah it's like. Do we really need him today? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but I've been able to make a dope living being a DJ. Um, and now, even if you don't do uh, electric electronic music, you can still make a great career out of this. And uh, it's it's uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I love what I do. 
you show up and you just really rock out. Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Passion Pod. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll see you soon.